Hello there, web researchers. Today we are going to take a look at evaluating web content. How can we tell if one web page is worth the information that's written on it? Are we okay with the web page? Can we use it as an information source? Well, that's what we're going to hopefully, hopefully is the key word there, identify today. So make sure you get out your pen and paper, you follow the storm philosophy, and sit back and enjoy. All right, so what are we going to look at today? Well, we are going to first identify what the web is good for and really what it's not good for. And then we're going to identify the five criteria that we want to use when we are evaluating web content. The World Wide Web is something that I think is absolutely incredible. It's fantastic. It has everything you ever wanted to find out about at your fingertips. It has games. It has movies. It has music. It has entertainment. It has everything you can think of. You can go shopping on there. You can buy whatever you want. I mean, it's incredible when you think about how much stuff really is on there. So it is a great, great thing. Don't get me wrong. However... It is not so great when it comes to information, when it comes to researching that information. Therefore, you need to be very careful when using internet sources. There are tons of sites out there. Anyone can create a website. Anyone can run a website. Any group can get involved with the website. However, that does not mean it's a reputable website. You can fancy up a website and make it look really, really, really professional but it doesn't mean it necessarily is and therefore we need to ensure its accuracy we need to assess the credibility of the website so how do we do this well we need to use five criteria to evaluate web content we need to assess its accuracy its authority its objectivity its currency and its coverage let's take a look now at each so the first criteria that we need to look at when we're looking at a web page is its accuracy. Can you answer these questions? Who wrote the page? Can you contact him or her? What is the purpose of the document? Why was it produced? Is the person qualified to write this document? By addressing those questions, you should be able to identify who wrote the page and therefore do some research on them. If they are a reputable author, then you can verify the web page. If you can't contact this person, if this person prefers to be anonymous, then you cannot verify the reputableness of this author. The home page definitely is the best location to find this information. But you also want to make sure that you know the difference between an author and a webmaster. An author is someone who writes or constructs the document. A webmaster is a person who designs or maintains a website. An author has background in the subject area, has the qualification, has the degree, has all of those things. A webmaster is just someone who's very good at maintaining web pages and therefore does not have the background knowledge. So you don't want to put a lot of stock in a webmaster. But if you can answer, if your page lists the author and institution that published the page and provides a way of contacting him or her, then you have the first step of ensuring the web page's accuracy. The next criteria is authority. Who published the document? And again, is it separate from the webmaster? Can you check the domain of the document? What institution publishes this document? And does the publisher list his or her qualifications? By checking the authority of the web page, you are checking the credentials of the author. And if you're not doing that, then you're checking the credentials of the institution that publishes the site. A .com website is a commercial organization. It does not have a lot of educational background. Its, not, it's intended purpose is not to provide reputable information. It's commercial. A .NET is a network service or access provider and again doesn't necessarily have the background to be publishing the content. It's just someone who's bought the web page as part of the network service. And .edu, a .gov and a .org is definitely what you'll be looking for. EDU is educational. Government is government. And ORG is an, usually a non-profit organization that does conduct reputable research. This information is what you really want to do, look for. And if your page lists the author, 
credentials and its domain is pr the preferred domain such as .edu, .gov, .org, and in some cases .net, then again you've addressed the authority of the web page. The third criterion is objectivity. What goals or objectives does this page mean? How detailed is the information? What opinions, if any, are expressed by the author? If it's an objective web page, you want to make sure that it doesn't contain bias. That is presenting an, a, a, a point of view that doesn't have that bias. That's not one-sided. That's presenting all the facts, all of the information. Consider the purpose of the page and see if they present information with limited advertising. The text should be the most important thing of the page. If it's advertising, then they're just looking to get more and more advertising revenue, and not necessarily it's not necessarily about the information. So, if you can identify whether or not the page provides accurate information with limited advertising, and its objective is presenting the information, then you've addressed the third criterion. The fourth is all about a web page's value, hence why we say currency. How much currency does this web page have? How much value? When was it produced? When was it updated? And how up to date are the links? So those links direct you to sources of information and other pieces of information that they use. And if those are not up to date, then how can you verify that information? You want to make sure that the web page has some up-to-date information because things happen all the time. Things change. And if it's updated regularly, they should be stated on the home page. Also, check that the links are working properly. If they're not working properly, there's a chance that they haven't updated those links over a long period of time. So if your page is current and is updated regularly, and if the links, if any, are also up-to-date, then you've addressed the currency of the web page. The fifth and final criterion is coverage. Are the links, if any, evaluated, and do they complement the theme of the document? Is the document or the web page all images, or is it a balance of text and images? Is the information presented cited correctly? Do they present the information sources? And therefore, are you allowed to view the information properly without having to pay any fees, or do you? change the browser technology and all of a sudden the web page completely changes on you or do you have to get new software and again how much of the page is images or animations if you put all sorts of animations in your document that's not necessarily that reputable it's a lot of fancy graphics and not enough content and you want content so if you can view the information properly and it's not limited to fees browser technology or software requirements then you've addressed the coverage of the web page so if you can answer each of these questions, then you may have a reputable website. Now, may is used for a reason, because even if you address all these questions, people still may put inaccurate information on their web sources. And so don't always believe that everything is accurate. Always question. Always ask whether or not it's reputable. But if you go through enough of these questions and you can answer enough of them, then I think then you're on the right track. And that's something that we want to value. Okay, And we want to use those sources. So that's it. That's the criteria. That's what we want to use to assess web pages. Make sure you get your notes in order. And we'll see you tomorrow.